welcome to a beautiful Wednesday morning. We're outside the Bat and Ball pub, the home of cricket. Once again, we're outside the home of cricket. And we're looking at something and riding something a little bit different today. This is the Suzuki Katana. This is actually a bike I went on the, the launch for, the UK launch for probably three Maybe four years ago did this bike come out? I can't remember. It absolutely bucketed with rain all day long. I'll put a link to the video at the top there. Totally bucketed with rain, and I've not ridden this bike since. Obviously, this machine is heavily based on the GSX S1000. The uh, skeptical amongst you could just say it's a GSX S in a frock, but I actually think this bike is pretty decent. I like this latest colour scheme with the red and the grey. I think it looks really good. I actually prefer the looks of this machine to the GSX S. A little bit more expensive, but I think I think it's better looking than the GSX S. But anyway, I'm babbling. Let's grab a pint. Let's go for a spin and chopsy roll the intro. So as I said at the beginning, I rode the GSXS back, well two, three, let's call it three years ago. It could have been four years ago. It was peeing with rain. Yeah, got a good feel for the bike, but couldn't really test out the handling because it was just such a wet ride. But I've been riding this bike, I've had it for two weeks now. I've done a fair few miles on this. I've done my Cheddar Gorge trip. You know, I've been out in good weather. I've really tested out the handling. And this is actually a very nice bike. I actually think the riding position is slightly nicer than the GSXS. It's definitely different. I couldn't really see much about the riding position on, on the, the Zuki website, but it's definitely got a different riding position to the GSXS. The tank's obviously a different shape. We'll come on to that tank in a minute. The bars, I think, are different. So it's, it's a bit different, and I really like the position. I think I actually prefer it to the GSXS. It's quite upright. You know, you're really sat fully on your bottom. Your arms are forward. The pegs are moderate i would say and they're sort of back a little bit so it's sort of a sporty-ish foot position not an uncomfortable leg position i'm of course six foot two 20 stone as i know you all know by now but some people don't so i've got to say it the bike has the legendary 2005 gsxr thousand motor in it obviously it's had some changes in that time it's been retuned for more torque and less top end power but it still makes 159 horsepower so it you know it's a powerful bike this and i think it's something like 114 newton meters of torque so not only has it got top end and it goes well it's got decent mid-range as well the bike's now got a quick shifter and a blipper which is beautiful i don't think it had that when it came out i think there's been some revisions to this bike in those three years because i don't remember having a quick shifter blipper it has now also the throttle response is much better than I remember it being. I think when this bike came out, Suzuki was struggling a little bit getting a nice smooth consistent throttle feel. You know, they were tr trying different cams in the in the actual twist grips, but I think they've actually sorted it out on the fueling point of view now. I've actually been running this in the full um, no, A mode. I think it's called yeah, the A mode, which is the most aggressive mode. Even in the A mode, it's perfectly acceptable the throttle response on this bike so i've just left this bike in a mode there's no reason to change it and i like that i mean that's one of the benefits from this machine you know a simple machine it's a relatively simple machine you know no frills <laughs> fairly basic and a brilliant price i mean 12 3 this bike costs a thousand cc liter naked 12.3 you know with a quick shifter blipper all included as standard you can't really argue with those sorts of prices my biggest criticism and there's two criticisms with this bike really the first one is the sort of usual which is that the brakes are a bit flat <laughs> yeah this has got to go this thing 
The brakes aren't brilliant, they work, but they, you know, the, the, the feel, they, they feel quite wooden, but they always deliver the performance when you pull them. But just when you're comparing it to some you know, of the European brands and the brake setups, and got much more feel. This is similar to, well, Yamaha. I don't know what it is with Japanese and brakes. They just can't seem to get it right, can they? I don't know why they can't get it right. It's not, it can't be that difficult. Maybe they just don't need to stop in Japan. The brakes are one thing. There's also another potential issue where there is really a bit of an oversight, a quite a big problem with this bike. And I think that is why you don't see more of these on the road because I think I've only ever seen one or two in the wild. I don't know how many of these Suzuki have sold in the UK, but I don't think it's many because I very, very rarely see them. And the reason for that is nothing to do with the styling, the looks of the bike. It's to do with the fact that it's only got a 12 litre fuel tank. Yes, you heard me right. This bike has a 12 litre fuel tank, which to be quite honest, has been a real pain in the time I've had this machine. When you've, it's got fuel gauge, thankfully it's got a fuel gauge. So it's not like a Street Fighter, which, which has a tiny range and doesn't even have a bloody fuel gauge. So it's got a fuel gauge, it's got a range to empty. But if you ride this bike as I've been riding it, sort of quite aggressively, you're talking 80, 85, 90 miles out of a full tank. You'll struggle to get 100 miles out of this machine if you're riding it spiritedly, let's call it. I think if you were to go for maximum fuel efficiency, you could probably eke out 110 miles out of it, maybe 120 if you didn't go over 30 miles an hour but in a tank is 12 litres. The GSX S has a 19 litre tank. The only reason I think they've done a 12 litre tank is just to make the bike look like a Katana. You know, they make it smaller here so it looks like a Katana. I'm sorry, but that is just style over function. That is not <laughs> a way of making a really good motorcycle. 12 litre fuel tank is simply not enough Suzuki. I'm really sorry. But apart from that, I think this bike is brilliant. It's such a shame. If only there could have been a way to reposition that fuel tank slightly, you know, move, move things around, make it lower in the bike. Just even 14 litres wouldn't be so bad. 12 litres, ugh, it's just not enough. If, of course, you, you're only riding locally and you don't mind stopping filling up for fuel, I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine if you don't mind just doing an hour and stop in and fill it. You know, because you're only really talking an hour's riding on this bike before you have to stop and fill it up. Well, depending on how you're riding it, how I'm riding it <laughs> anyway. So yeah, it's not a touring machine. So it does limit this bike's appeal. So anyway, enough about the fuel tank size. One thing I've noticed on the new Suzuki's they seem to now have the ability to turn off the traction control. Obviously, these are quite simple bikes. I'm not even sure this has an IMU. It could do, I don't think so. You know, I think that's why these are affordable. But you, so it has traction control, of course, you know, three different levels of traction control. It does the job. You know, wheelie control is also built into the traction control. But what I like about the latest Suzuki's is you can turn off the traction control and it will stay off when you turn the bike on and off, which is really unusual. So I, I've turned the traction control off on this machine. It's actually a little bit of a wheelie monster with the traction control turned off. It's a lot of fun, this bike. And when I turn the bike on and off, the traction control stays off. I don't know why more manufacturers can't do that. You know, put some responsibility on the owners that they know what they're doing. You know, don't treat them like idiots. Don't have to be nanny and have things switch back on and off. You know, just give us some credit. Don't nanny me. If I want to turn my traction control off, I want to turn my traction control off. The suspension on this bike is KYB. Woo! It's a nice ride. It's pretty firm, the suspension, but then it's quite compliant as well. You know, Suzuki's tend to get the suspension set up pretty good. You know, being a larger rider, I like a bit of extra support. There's not too much dive as you go on the brakes. 
yes, it's not bad the support from this bike. I mean, obviously, a bike, 12,000 pound litre bike, you know, it's not got the best suspension in the world, and I'm sure by changing the rear shock and having a little play around, you could probably really improve it. Let's watch this guy, you just know he's going to pull out. But it's not bad. It's not bad for at the price point this bike is at. If you're really pushing on, it can get a little bit bouncy. You know, you can ride around it, but it's not like an M1000R, you know. It's not a real, it's not a Tuono. But you can get a lick on, and it can do it, and it's fun, you know. But hey, you can see a little bit of, little bit of Waro there. But, well, you know, it's good for another bit there, as I went down that bump, but... <laughs> It's brilliant fun, it's good fun. And it's just like the GSXS, you know, that suspension setup, I think it's identical. It's good. There ain't much wrong with the suspension for the price point of the bike. Blipper, it's brilliant. <laughs> Listen to that blipper. The quick shift is great, you know, it's, it's one of the, the better systems out there, this. And considering, obviously, this engine and gearbox was never designed with a quick shifter blipper in mind, you know, when this was made in 2005, those things didn't exist. Obviously they've made some changes, I guess, but it works really well. The seat is very comfortable, quite wide as well and soft. I actually think the seat could be better than the GSX-S. It's very hard, without back-to-backing these, even though I did try the GSX-S quite recently, it's quite hard to remember because I've tried a lot of bikes in the last month or so. I've been a busy boy. But the seat is comfortable. I've been on this a day's ride, no discomfort whatsoever so you know the only discomfort is having to stop at the petrol station <laughs> it's probably been comfortable because you're on and off it so often to put fuel in <laughs> so you never sat in the seat long enough for it to be a problem the engine also sounds great you know they've done a lot of work with the airbox to get additional noise from the engine through the airbox like all manufacturers do at the moment you know there's no way to make noisy exhaust on motorcycles these days You've got to get that engine noise through the airbox, you know, and this sounds good. The only other thing really which is showing its age on this bike now is of course that, that TFT, or say, sorry, LCD. It's not a TFT, it's an LCD on this bike. You know, I would imagine that's going to be changed probably next year. I know Suzuki's latest machines now have the, the new TFT, the GS, GS X S1000 GT has it, which is basically the same engine as this. That's got it, so it's obviously just a, a bolt-on, really, to this bike. So I would imagine this is going to have the TFT on it next year. That'll give it a much more modern feel. There's nothing wrong with this TFT. I mean, it gives you outside air, temperature, countdown to empty, even battery voltages. You know, it gives you everything you need, but it's just looking a little bit dated now, isn't it? So I think that new TFT, when that goes on this machine, will really spruce it up and give it a much more modern, modern look. Whether it should have a modern look being a retro style bike, whatever. What I'd love to see Suzuki do is to refresh this bike and the S model and put the VVT GSX-R engine in these bikes with the TFT, the VVT engine. Can you imagine how good that would be? You know, I wouldn't mind spending more money on a Suzuki. They don't have to be priced as budget bikes. Put the VVT motor in it, update the styling, TFT dash, that would be a fantastic bike. I mean, the technology's there. It's not like they've even got to do any development work. The engine exists. Some retuning, make it Euro 5 compliant, bang it in this, bang in the GSXS, and Suzuki, you've got a winner. So there she is. I actually think from the front, it's quite sleek looking. I like the sort of angle of the front and it points out here. Little running lights here. Why the indicators can't be in there? I guess they're too close together, but that's got to be an aftermarket job, isn't it? Put the indicators in there. Really tidy up the front end. But I like that front end. I like that. And like I say, I really like this colour scheme with this grey. I know this grey's everywhere at the moment and this could date quite quickly, this grey. But I like the red wheels. I like the grey. You know, where the styling does sort of go off a little bit is the rear of the bike. And I think it's mainly due to this arrangement at the bottom here. I think, bin all this, bin all this, probably save you four kilos to get rid of that lot. Get a little 
plate out the bottom there and like I say RNG do one a few other companies do one move that whole unit and the indicators up under the tail the exhaust is decent nice small exhaust all blacked out on this model as well everything's blacked out on this the suspension is fully adjustable you know got full twiddlies compression and rebound dampening on the forks Brembo calipers I mean the brakes are only a set of braided lines and the pad change away from being really good so that's an easy fix to sort out the feel of the brakes on this machine the rear shock is also fully adjustable preload with the collar and then uh, I think oh is it, is it fully adjustable I don't know mine maybe it isn't fully adjustable don't ask me am I meant to know these things I think that's better looking than the GSX S 1000 let me know in the comments what you think so there we are a very quick video on the katana uh, you know I, I i've enjoyed this machine it's no m1000r you know it's no m1000r it's no stu super duke it's no street fighter it's twelve thousand pound you know it, it's half the price of the ducati street fighter it's not half the motorcycle of the ducati street fighter if your budget is about 12k for your naked then consider this bike if you can put up with that 12 litre fuel tank because that is the only reason I can think of why you don't see these more of these on the road well there we go guys hope you've enjoyed the video I will be back out again thrashing motorcycles shortly so uh, if you've enjoyed the review please consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next one cheers guys